so we're so we're talking we're talking SEMA we're talking show show closures show announcements mm-hmm. would actually show be better. Um, but I have to give you a quick update on this lyric thing. That so I'm going to do a little radio thing here for just a moment. <laughs> yes, okay? man, I, I love it. If, for the for those of you that are just joining us, I, I don't know how you would do that on a podcast. I guess if you're if you're picking this up on the YouTube side, we usually yeah, start that yeah. kind of right after the break. Uh, right before over. the break, I went to Cadillac.com and I asked about the lyric because we're not sure they've got this lyric out and we're not sure if it's like they're trying to encourage people to take pre-orders or if they're just looking to see interest or if they're actually going to sell it. And I, I, you know, I really want GM to do well. I just sometimes it's just surprising to me how poorly planned out some of this is. So I went on their website and I started to chat. And this nice lady named Trish responded to me. Okay, so I asked about the lyric, and I said, any idea if or when the lyric will be for sale? All right, now, we're, you caught up, Jay? Yeah. Okay, so she says to me after several minutes of research, at this time, my resources are not providing me with many details. I suggest reaching out to your local dealer as well as signing up for updates via the lyric page on our website. And then she asked if I wanted a link for that, and I said, no, thanks. And then she said, is there anything else I can help you with today? Because, Jay, I just can't leave this alone. (laughs) Okay. Did you say, hey, what do you know about the new K5 coming out? The K Blazer coming out? I took this in a complete other direction. Okay. When's my vet vet coming in? (laughs) Are the mid-engine Corvettes available for immediate delivery? Okay. And she says... Are you inquiring if there are any 2020 Corvette models available on dealer lots... Inego Montoya. That's I told her my name was. Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm asking. Well, is it the 2020? Did you specify C8? Because they they got a lot of C7 still sitting out there, man. It's a 2020 C8. I did say mid engine. Okay. Here I'll clarify. Mid engine. C8. Yeah, I did Not, say C. I said C8. Oh, 2020 okay. C8 mid engine. So let's see. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll so see we'll happens. see. We'll come back to that. All right, so okay, yeah. SEMA made a big announcement. Okay, so um, uh, as as recently as a couple weeks ago, things were mm-hmm. going. Uh, we were getting regular updates from SEMA on plan changes to the show. Now, this is the largest automotive show in the world. It typically happens in November. It happens in Vegas. Um, yep. Jay and I've done it. We've we've gone as media. Um, we were going to go again this year. Yeah. And SEMA, we started having conversations because it was like, well, you know, we're reading the releases, we're reading the safety updates, and they're going, you know, we're going to do this or that. And we're, mm. we're, Jay and I are talking, we're going, yeah, how are they going to, how are they going to pull that off? How are they going to pull this off? Yeah. And based on kind of the guidelines that they're going to have to adhere to for safety, for public health mm-hmm. and safety, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's an so, international show, too. That's the thing. Right. That's the biggest deal right there. So we apparently weren't alone because a lot of people on the media, so SEMA has a media page on Facebook and and a lot of people on that page came back and kind of asked some questions that Jay and I were kind of thinking out loud, like, you know, Mm -hmm. just the lines to get into some of these places, even though, you know, you can't we we sometimes could go through a separate media entrance, but sometimes Mm -hmm. they made us go like do a couple laps around the building and then come back and ask again. (laughs) <laughs> and right. um, and so we we're just like, how how are they going to, I mean, you can't social, you would be all the way down the Las Vegas Strip if you took these people and made them stand six feet apart. That's right. It just ain't, yeah, it's just, I, we, you and I were, I mean, we were really scratching our heads thinking, gosh, man, it's just going to be almost impossible to pull this thing well, off. And I mean, you can't at the same move, time, that convention center is gigantic. Well, and not only that, they're, they're, they're also the, the Apex show. Uh, which is the automotive after park it's you know product show and that, that is basically a supplier show right so you have you want to explain the, the, a little bit about kind of what drives because they happen at the same time they and happen, they happen at the same time. within sh- you know uh what like a couple miles of each other you show yeah, you, you've, you've got the apex show that goes on the same time as sema sema's over at the las vegas convention center and the uh apex show which is um held at the Sands Expo Center. Um, it's an automotive aftermarket product show. Basically, all the suppliers in the industry are there. 
and you know we're talking from all over the world mm-hmm. I mean, every every walk of life uh every continent is is represented there lots of uh asian market lo- uh, asian, quite a few from australia you've got um, you've got india you've got yep. india is huge in the in the um product south manufacturing. america south america um mexico um and then so what you have is you have those guys but you also have um the customers of these companies that that come in there to talk and do business and make purchases even um so i thought you know you doing these two shows simultaneous okay and they have to shuttle people back and forth because the the sema and apex passes cover both shows and Keith and I have been through this, and I've been through it for years, but they have a shuttle system that runs you between the convention centers. Well, you know, you, you, we've been, you've been in those lines, Keith. It, it's like, be, you know, being, you know, at a Walmart waiting for the store to open at 6 a.m. on, on Black Friday I, or, I, or at a concert. To be honest with you, it was kind of uncomfortable. Kind of creeping. Even before yeah. BC, before COVID, with some of the kind of... Right. It was kind of yeah. creepy, really, yeah. because you're around all these people. You don't know you know, you know know what they have or if they're sick or and what. It is Vegas, you know. You know I mean, you, yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> anyway, but so here we questioned it, and we were we were talking about... We had our plans in place, and we were, we were going through this whole process to go and you're going to start booking rooms and those sorts of things and going through the process um, as we had communicated with a few of our... our, our, our um, uh, colleagues in the industry, um, AERA was fully committed to being there. Uh, we talked to those guys; they were going to be going. Um, I know a couple of other suppliers in the industry that were going to also be there. I do know some suppliers that had decided not to exhibit. Um, however, they were going to walk the shows, um, which is an option for a lot of people. Um, but uh, so we, after our discussion last week. Our decision was made for us. Do um, you want me to go ahead and spill the beans? Yeah. Well, the 2020 SEMA show has been canceled, guys. And well, let me read. Yeah, will, read, we, read how we'll, they worded that because I there. This is interesting. It's it is now. It's which gonna which spark one? More because I've got several ones. I'm not go, pulling from the email. I went right to their website today. Okay. So I will read what's on their website right now. If you go to SEMA. Uh, SEMAshow.com, I think, or SEMA.com. You'll find it there. Uh, So they say this. This is an update about the 2020 SEMA show. Due to the COVID-19 and concerns that event facilities and services will be unavailable, uh, the SEMA show will not be taking place in 2020. While both event organizers and industry members have been working tirelessly to deliver an outstanding SEMA show in November, mounting uncertainty has rendered continuing uh, with the event inadvisable. Uh, SEMA experts, uh, excuse me, SEMA expects the decision will bring much needed clarity to an uncertain picture and will help exhibitors, attendees, and partners plan accordingly. Uh, recent SEMA show survey results indicated interest in a possible virtual trade show with a related uh, live elements. Uh, SEMA will be working with industry members to determine interest levels on specific alternatives. Uh, the SEMA show is continuing to be committed uh, to furthering business in the uh, automotive specialty equipment market and to providing manufacturers and buyers with the best opportunity co- to connect. Um, so the bottom line is they appreciate the spirit, the hard work, and the innovation in the industry and what they've done for the show every year uh, while we're disappointed uh, the circumstances prevent us from hosting the show in November. We look forward to getting everyone together in 2021 for another outstanding event. Full refunds for SEMA show exhibitor booth deposits and attendee registration fees will be issued. And they go on to list the future show dates, which 2021 will be November 2nd through the 5th. Um, and the SEMA show coincides with that, but that will be the 2nd through the 3rd. They're one day shorter than SEMA, yeah. I think. Now, Apex. Wait, hold on. So Go ahead. I want to add one thing that's just going to spark conversation here, and mm-hmm. then and then I want to get into the the PRI show in Indy, which happens in December. Um, but first, an update on our Lyric inquiry, uh, so, mm-hmm. which has turned into a mid-engine Corvette C8 inquiry. Okay, so <laughs> now y'all, this has been going on on this podcast. Uh, let's see, my uh, started at started. 18 minutes ago, 
All right. This is why I hate chats because it's just like if you you call somebody up, you could have this conversation in three minutes. But you know, mm-hmm. we're going to drag it out over an hour. Yeah, we're going to chat. Chat when bot. you're su- okay. yeah, you're su- yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I gave her my zip code. She said I'll check mm-hmm. and see if I can find one on a lot for you. She 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 came back and said, "Are there any features you want?" And I said, "No." At this point, I just want to look at one in person. I didn't tell her Jay that I've already sat in one, but you know. <laughs> So at the museum, um, she said. Uh, now this is perfect because this is gonna. Where is the PRI show? PRI show is in Indianapolis. Okay, so this is. I'm in <laughs> Nashville. For those of you that don't know, okay. Mid engine Corvette uh, went on a road show over a year ago. Mm-hmm. Was announced what about roughly a year and a half ago? It was in July, June and July of last year is when they came out with it, but it was announced, yes, a year and a half ago. Yes, it was coming. All right. Today, August 10th is when we're recording this, okay, Mm -hmm. for posterity. I'm asking if I can find one on a lot somewhere to go look at. Now, this is, look, guys, I don't hate GM. I want them to do well. But these mm-hmm. are the kinds of things like this lyric that we were talking about. If you're watching this on YouTube, I encourage you to go back and check out the podcast on our website, partscounterguru.com. You'll get the full uncut version. We So we, we, we cut it down for video purposes, and you're only going to get right. a part of today's podcast. Right. A year later, and I still, this is the best they could offer me. I was able to locate one at Valley Chevrolet in Spencer, Indiana. Okay. Three states away. Unbelievable, man. Are you unbelievable? Are you kidding me? Okay, I got to do this though. I want to see where Spencer, Indiana, is. Uh, so what's a great contact number and email address for you? And I'm gonna go. Um, that's like three states away. Yeah, so that's going nowhere. So uh, my point is this. It's these little details. It's not... I don't think they're difficult oh, details. Oh, my word, man. How is one in Spencer, Indiana? Where Where is how, that? How, What's how, it why is, why is there not one in, like, Louisville? I mean, the dadgum plant is, like, right down the road from Louisville. Right. Okay? Right. S- Spencer, man, is, like, in the middle of nowhere. Middle of the state? What What? what quadrant? It's... it's um. It is uh, south uh, southwest uh, near Hoosier National Forest. Okay. Um, it is southwest of Indiana, like in between Columbus, Indiana, and Terre Haute. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. So it's, so yeah. I, again, I sort of I sort of um, it's a head scratcher, man. I mean, I you guys, GM, uh, you, you don't go on commercials telling people we realize you're not thinking about probably buying a car right now that's just uh that's she, just so she says insane. that's the closest i was able to locate uh many of the 2020 well, just, models were ordered by customers yeah a year and a half ago uh mm-hmm. sold from dealer lots within a few days speaking with your local dealer no thanks appreciate well, the- yeah, just in, just. I'm gonna in be. The I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be a little condescending here, just because I'm having fun on the podcast. Appreciate your help. Please, I'll check here. Here we go. I'll okay. check <laughs> back, <laughs> and maybe this time next year, y'all will be serious about getting some. I'm not selling a car. Those <laughs> cars built. All right. So that's that. Done. So that's good done. luck. Okay. If you order a lyric, maybe this decade it'll show it up. It could be. Know. Yeah. You, you may be. Yeah. All they, right. may, they, they may have a vaccine by then. So, so. SEMA said, mm-hmm. and this was in the news release that we get from them. We're on the yes. media blast. I, was, I knew you were going there. Uh, yes. They said in the show update, they used a very curious term to me. It said, the 2020 SEMA show will not take place as planned. Mm-hmm. Now, you could play that back with a couple different inflections and make it sound a couple different ways. Right. You could say the SEMA 2020 SEMA show will not take place as planned. 
Right. You could say the SEMA show will not take place as planned. As planned. Hmm. So this could turn into a virtual show. Well, and we're and we'll go to the next level of this. To and tell it's you been why done before. That. Apple mm-hmm. did it. Uh, there's been a couple virtual uh, um, big industry type shows that have gone virtual. Mm-hmm. There, there's no standardization on how to do that yet, but. Right. Uh, you would well, think, Jay, they have to be looking in that direction. Oh, I know they are, and I'll tell you why. Because Apex is affiliated with with SEMA. Okay. And again, they they run those shows simultaneously. Apex on August the fifth. Um, so five days made, ago. Yep. Yeah, made the announcement uh, that the Apex Show 2020 that is scheduled for November third through the fifth. At the Sands Expo and Caesars Forum Conference Center in Las Vegas will not be held as an in-person trade show event this year due to the current state of the COVID-19 pandemic and related governmental prohibitions and restrictions on gatherings, businesses, and travel. Instead, Apex will provide a virtual slash digital experience with many of the show's same elements presented digitally. Given the state of Nevada's recently announced long-term mitigation strategy for the COVID-19 pandemic, which has definitely prohibited events with more than 50 participants, and the severe limitations on international and domestic travel imposed in connection with the pandemic, unfortunately, the traditional in-person event cannot proceed. So there you go. They're going to go virtual. Apex is very big, but it is not as big as SEMA. It's not. The thing and that I, you know, I know SEMA was talking about, like in the survey, they said, well, if we had it all outside, would you go? Would well, you the go? problem with that is, where are you going to do that? Because they do have that outside the convention center, they have a big God, we were, But it's not it near as big scorching. as what's inside. Yeah, right? but still, t- and the, the elements as well. I mean, it's now high. granted, it, it, it yep. doesn't normally rain that time of year that much in Las Vegas, but it gets it hot, man. Yeah, and... If you bring everybody that's normally in the convention center, because that building's going to still be there, outside mm-hmm. to that lot, which is big, but nowhere near as big as the actual convention hall. Right. And you pack, even if half of those people show up, how are you mm-hmm. going to pull that off? And and that's why I'm thinking, you know, that, that, that had to force their decision. That and the travel bans that, you know, there's so many people that travel internationally to get to the show and you've got to deal with quarantining and are you going to make them show up three weeks early and you know it's Mm -hmm. just a mess so now we're talking that they've realistically got two months to put together some sort of virtual show which that's right for as many exhibitors as SEMA has Mm -hmm. and for as big as that show is I'm not sure they can pull this off in two months no I don't know it's um I would I would think though that they have been working on a virtual version of this show even before this announcement came out. You think so? Because I do. I think they had a plan B. Um, but then again, I may be wrong. Because again, uh, keep in mind, Apex is a different animal than SEMA. Right. You know, Apex Apex is basically a supplier show. Um, you know, SEMA is too, but it's a show show where they're yeah. exhibiting new new things coming out. Yeah, well, I mean, that's where your, I your manufacturers give their press, you know, Toyota, Ford, GM, Right. That's it, and and like last year we did the you know the Ford, uh, the uh, Jay Leno Bronco, uh, right. the the resto reveal, and they had all we, we kept saying there's got to be something to these retro Broncos, and we were actually as, absolutely 100 percent spot on right. I guarantee you that this year at SEMA, Ford had all intentions of having a bunch of those new babies sitting around, man. Because there's a bunch of them already out there. Right. GM, did you hear that? Ford has a bunch of them already out there. Ford has vehicles ready to buy. You can actually take ownership next year. Maybe you guys will have your C8 out uh, at dealerships and, by then. I don't know. Uh, right. I, like, I try to be fair on this and not just bash General Motors, but I just feel like they're, they've are they done some things really well, and we, we mm-hmm. raved about this Corvette when they announced it when I got to see one. I just... Yeah, I was so happy for I, them. Sometimes I, thought, I look at this and I go, you carried this ball to the five-yard mm-hmm. line, and then it's like everybody just went 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 somewhere and had a snack. Oh, man, you just basically pulled out the best analogy, man. It's like feeding Marshawn Lynch the ball all game in that Super Bowl, and then you throw the interception. And this is, this is what, like 
Is this one of those like cricket or what are we talking about? 